How you doing? I am Joe Franchino from Crest Hardware and Urban Garden Center here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Today we're going to go on a tour and show you all of the different definitions of urban gardening. But first, before we do that, I want to show you our shop. Come on in. Hey, what's up? So we're here out in the Urban Garden Center. We've had this in operation since 2007. It's become a huge part of what we do. Brooklyn is the center of everything lately. So we have a very, very wide demographic of people that we are serving on a day-to-day -day basis. We've been family owned and operated since 1962. Uh, being around that long gives you an opportunity to really understand what your customers want and need. Since we've had the garden, we've learned a lot about our new customers, and those are some of the people that I want to take you to today. Let's go. We are here with Christopher Griffin, also known as the Plant Queen, and we are going to go check out Christopher's apartment and his definition of urban gardening here in his one-bedroom apartment in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. So this is my one bedroom apartment in Crown Height. So this right here is my kitchen. Um, and as you can see, I have a variety of different plants. Um, my snake plants I have up here, which are generally low light, so they can survive up here pretty well. I have my ghost cactus, my monsteras. I have this five foot snake plant, which is my pride and joy. It's almost as tall as I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it continues more and more. It continues. Um, and so here I have um, a whole bunch of aeroids and tropical plants. I have my humidifier right here. I have a couple cacti. Um, and a number of these are from Crest, actually. Clearly, they're all on different you know, watering cycles. They're not all the same all the time. So how do you manage that? I typically water my plants every like once a week. Okay. So overwatering is a big issue, um, and plants are more likely to survive underwatering than overwatering. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just watered my plants last night. I came home. It takes me about a good hour to water everything. Um, I turn on some music. I drink some tea, and uh, it's a whole thing. I think we can learn so much from plants, um, not only about ourselves, but how we treat other people, patients. Um, attention to detail, how they're responding to our actions and our care. Like there's so much you can learn from plants. We are here at North Brooklyn Farms. It is undoubtedly a public space. That's right. Uh, but you guys also do host a whole bunch of events. That's right, yeah. So it's a kind of unique uh, public, private, um, really it's like an experiment in creating green space that, that actually is self-funded. Mm -hmm. So we keep this open to the community as a park, um, but we also have an area where we operate private events mm -hmm. and that revenue stream funds the whole operation. And then we have chefs in house who prepare food uh, from the garden and serve it at the events that we host here in the farm. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. And I'm sure it, it, they kind of bleed into one another. You'll have someone who here who's just stumbled upon it as a public, knowing it as a public space and had no idea that they can also rent this out and have exactly. birthday party, uh, corporate event, whatever it might be. Right. So the space really markets itself uh, just by being here and we really like that element of surprise. Yeah. So people do discover it and then they feel kind of a sense of ownership over it because it's something that they found themselves, yeah. you know? And in a place like New York, it feels so special. Uh, and then they can have kind of like a, a personal relationship with the space, you know? And then they might want to have their birthday party here or maybe, uh, you know, they work for a major brand that wants to do a product launch or something like that. And that kind of revenue really helps uh, to pay all the gardeners, all the chefs, all the servers. Uh, buy all the plants, uh, the seeds, the soil and materials to make this whole thing work. You can see here we have our pollinator border yeah. uh, surrounding the farm here. Um, and then we have our vegetable rows in the center. The pollinator border uh, not only attracts uh, insects, but it also helps to purify the air uh, around the vegetable plants. Uh, and you know, also all these taller 
gardens around the outside are, are also kind of purifying the air and attracting pollinators, uh, birds, and just uh, more biology to the space. Uh, in our old space, we had raised beds, um, but in this space, we decided to build um, two really massive raised beds and build up a pathway around them. Uh, so this is really um, basically one giant raised bed and underneath it is a layer of coarse crushed stone, a layer of uh, felt uh, geotextile, and then about one and a half to two and a half feet of planting soil. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, with a wooden edge. And then here we're on top of uh, clean fill, uh, crushed stone, and then crushed stone screenings. All right, one thing that is uh, a challenge for sure in a place like New York is the weather. How do you guys deal with stuff like that? I try to make sure I'm always prepared with all the materials that I need ahead of time. You know, my nursery transitions uh, from like a heated greenhouse plastic to um, a shade cloth, sometimes within a matter of days. Uh, so I always need to be ready to adapt like that. I also try to have all the irrigation supplies on hand that I could possibly need uh, because similarly you know you might get a hot day before you fully have your irrigation set up uh, so you want to be ready and have as many tools as possible to adapt to that so there are all these different <laughs> variables you have to think about yeah. when you're working out here yeah it's like uh, having to have a uh a Swiss Army garden knife at your disposal yeah, at all times. Exactly. If you had to give um, some tips or advice to a newbie, what would be the little, you know, nugget or gem that you would give them? Make sure you have enough sunshine. Make sure you have enough water, and make sure you're going to be able to actually take care of the plants that you're selecting for your garden uh, in the long term. So I think those are often the, the most important things when people start an urban garden. If I see an urban garden that's been neglected, it's usually because um, there's not enough uh, water, sunshine, or soil, or there's not a community built around that space that's actually gonna care for that space and keep it going uh, either in perpetuity or for the lifetime of the project. Right on, yeah, it's all about that commitment too. That's we can't right. forget, forget about that. Right. right on. Yeah. Thank you so hey, much. Thanks a lot for coming out. I really today, appreciate Joe. it. Yeah. yeah it's fun giving you guys a tour of the garden. Henry Sweets at North Brooklyn Farms. So we are here uh, with longtime Crest customers, Eisen Robbins and Laura Stusen, in their lovely backyard here in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So tell us a little bit about the history of this lovely garden here. Uh, we moved in in 1994, and there were a few plants here. The lily of the valley, a couple of hostas, and a couple of trees, and that was it. Uh -huh. And um, I talked to the landlord about putting a few pots out there. And so I just started with a few herb pots that mm -hmm. are in the back. And, um, and then every year, just more and more and more and more and more. And, and this is very, very specific. I mean, you're covered it's, by... It's tough uh, conditions because, so this is south and the building blocks most of the light and then um, it's basically like a canyon. So it's shady except for 11 to uh, one o'clock. Yeah. So it's been a bit of a trial and error to see what works. One of the things I think about the garden is one day we may not live here. So all of this is designed to leave. Mm. So there's a door that leads out to a garbage chute, yeah. out yeah, to right. the truck that will take us, ah. take everything <laughs> away. So everything has been planted Plus, in a yeah, manner, plant yeah. in a way that it can go through that doorway on a dolly and gone. That's really smart because you don't think about that unless you're doing urban garden specifically because you might not always be in that apartment. Yeah. How can I make sure that all of this hard work can come with me? So that's genius. I hope you guys learned something here, and uh, soon after we're heading to our last stop of the day. We are here at our final stop of the day uh, in the home of Summer Rain Oaks. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I. This place is amazing. <laughs> He's speechless. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty speechless. Let's start the tour. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, I'll take right. you into my kitchen, which right. is like one of my favorite rooms of the house. And I just kind of like 
just started to build, you know, plants around it, almost like a sculpt a sculptor, you know, with plants. I love the little nook cutout. That is the most like New York nook cutout. It's yeah. like so convenient. I think that's a key of urban gardening, whether you're doing it inside or out, is making the most of your space. Indeed. And uh, and that's a nice little clever way. And you can hide it with a nice big beautiful uh, cutting, board. cutting board. I know it's yeah. it's true. It's true. I'm a big composter, and I go to the green market every Saturday. I'm here and like. Actually, my freezer is full of compost, so <laughs> it's about the only thing that fills my freezer, that and some ice, ice cubes. This is like one of my favorite DIY projects I've ever did with my dad. It was like the first DIY project that I did, and it was like literally just using reclaimed boards, Tapcon screws, hose clamps. This was the plant that it started for me. It was originally here with the where the cissus is now, mm -hmm. but um, it does have a tendency to press its leaves up against the southwest facing window. It ten has a tendency to burn. This is like more in my succulent corner. This is where like my succulents get the light. They can handle it. I just put my Apuntia humifusa out on the balcony again, but it was we had so much rain that it was like getting drowned. So I pulled it in and. A couple days ago I moved it out there, but these are like typical outdoor plants that sometimes I like to grow indoors. Yeah. I mean, meaning like all plants grow outdoors, but some of these have been sold as like houseplant varieties for a while. So where did your love of plants come from? Because it's evident everywhere you look <laughs> that this is, well, this means the world to you and that this is a huge uh, passion for you and you know I want to touch base on a couple of other things later but I want to know what the genesis of all this was. Well I mean I think partially you know it's just I developed an appreciation for it when I was young because I grew up in the country I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania and it was a very like bucolic area but I was definitely like the most like gung-ho on nature growing up as a kid like compared to the other kids in my school so that was kind of like my shtick for um, the longest time but I think I was like lucky I just like really found my passion um, I really loved kind of the insignificant things, like the things that we often overlook, like the little mushrooms, the insects, the, the like, you know, slugs and snails and bugs and things like that. I don't know, it was just like it made sense for me to start bringing plants into my home in the city and I think that's part of what has made this my home. Mm -hmm. um, I was really lucky three years ago to get a plot also in my community garden, which sometimes are hard to come by. So it's a great, it's a great garden. It's about a quarter acre, which is a lot of land around here. If you had to give, um, you know, some just nuggets of advice, what would that be? I would encourage people to really learn how to observe one plant, you know, to really get a sense of that plant. I have a lot of folks who write me who are like, I don't know what this plant is. Can you tell me so I know how to take care of it? And I'd always love for people to kind of step back and really look at that plant and how it's structured. Because I think typically when many of us actually see plants, we're like, oh, that's a green plant and, and that's it. And to learn that like, yeah, not all plants have um, plant tags and um, care tips and that maybe you could even um, become better at taking care of a plant, not by following the care tag, but, but by following your gut and your observation. Wow, that's some solid advice. <laughs> that's some really solid advice. Thanks so much for tagging along on our urban garden tour. Auf Wiedersehen.